Alright guys, welcome back to another MCritter tutorial. So today I am going to be updating a older tutorial and I basically ported it, but not only ported it, I also made sure that the um, original script was bundled with the um, workspace now. So I'll be moving this tutorial over to GitHub finally. Uh, this is the uh, teleportation block one, so we'll be able to update that one. So not only the original script now works for 1.18, it I think probably worked for 1.18, I don't think much changed, but um, it's all ported to that version regardless, as well as some major improvements uh, on a second type of version for this particular tutorial. Um, which basically allows for cross-world compatibility. Now, I will have a few different mentions that I should note uh, when I'm actually going through the teleportation thing, but uh, I'll cover that in a little bit. I actually have a mod out right now that um, basically uses the fundamental parts of this per particular tutorial to make a... Um, more polished version for myself. So uh, if you haven't heard of Portal Gates, that's the tutorial that basically uses this um, latest concept. So let's go into a game and I'll show you basically what it does and then we can basically take it from there. All right, so we're officially in game and uh, there are some things to note about this system. Um, with teleporting between locations, uh, there can be a slight delay uh, for the loading time and stuff like that. Now, I will suggest having your tick delay 10 seconds or more, uh, which is uh, 200 ticks or more. So the reason for that is because uh, the game just takes a little bit of time to go between dimensions and you can actually get stuck going between the worlds if you... Um, try to have the tick rate or the the amount of time less because you're technically from what I can tell you're in the world still while it's loading and that triggers the timer to automatically go I can't really find a way other than increasing a delay time which is run through the entity so with that being said um, just keep that in mind when you're actually making the portal make sure that it's at least 200 ticks or more um, but, uh, yeah, so basically place down the portal and then you can place down another one. Now this can be in either the same world or another world. And then what you want to do is you want to right click on it and then you want to basically right click on your other one and then do that back to the other direction. So once you've done that, you can basically stand on it. I have a little display thing so you can see the ticks going down on it. And then we're over on the other one. If we stand off of it, it said 52 it's back up to the original 200 so we get off 898 and then it's back up to the normal so there's a reset time when we basically stand off of the portal block itself uh, the reason for that is you don't want them to immediately teleport um, when if they were to kind of glitch off the block or whatever so it's important to make sure that it resets if they're not standing on the block all right, so with that being said, um, yeah, obviously we'll just run this over and then we'll teleport back to the other one. So there we go. And now let's demonstrate it between the worlds. So we'll go ahead and place one right here and then we will set that up by right clicking on it. So we have it saved to the item. Uh, this is done through item NBT. Uh, you can't save it to player NBT because as soon as you go through this portal, it's gonna wipe all the player NBT and that's not gonna work well for entities and stuff so once we store it onto the item we want then what we can do is we can go through the portal uh, for or whatever world now this should work on custom worlds as well so you can basically just hop through and then you can place down another portal here we'll link that up and before we go and step on this portal we want to make sure that we get this location and then we can basically just wait for the timer to go back. And then we don't even need to go through that portal. We'll just go here. And as you can see, the ticks was already down to like 100 uh, when we first loaded in. That's because of the time delay before like loading the world and stuff. So once we're here, we can set this up. 
by just right clicking on it and then we can go back to the nether if we want to so yeah that's basically that uh again the tick delay can happen a little bit longer uh for lower end pcs that have to load in all the chunks so you might want to increase it even higher than 200 ticks but um outside of that that's basically the gist of the script like how the block actually functions let's go into m creator and i'll kind of break down the three different procedures and the block that we have here all right so we have one block which is our teleport uh block or teleport block and then we have just a simple model or simple um texture setup for here the model is through the resources 3d it's a json file it's right here we have the textures all set up for that and that's where we're actually loading the textures and this is i think used for particles so it's not really too important but you still need to have it in uh the size you want to set your bounding box size uh all these settings can basically be configured how you like uh that's not important you will need to have a one tick delay uh, tick rate for the actual block. This is important for setting the variable. Now you don't want to enable random tick rate or random tick randomly because it won't uh, work efficiently for resetting the um, testing if the player is off of the block and making sure that the timer resets. So make sure this is you use this one and that you have one tick. Other than that, you can basically configure everything else you want. Uh, ent uh, tile entity, you will need to enable this. You will need to basically have at least one slot for the actual item. Uh, the reason for this is because we're basically storing a item to the block's inventory, which we read it in to basically use it as basically storing variables. Uh, 1.18 messed up the entire system with uh, MBT and um, for blocks and it's been really hard to actually work with um, this particular tutorial because uh, if you go through the portal for some reason even though that the MBT is assigned to the block it completely wipes it so again there's nothing in the script that would actually cause it to be wiped but either it's on forges end or Mojang changed something and mess something up but either or uh, just make sure that you set that part up properly or you're just going to wipe all your data which is kind of unfortunate uh, again we don't need any actual inventory for this we're just using the slot to basically store an item so make sure that you have at least one slot for that uh, fluid in storage en or fluid and energy storage uh, for forge energy it doesn't we don't actually need that uh, we have three procedures uh, the first one is for the right click event. This is basically for linking the portals together. Uh, the one on the update tick is for basically the resetting of the variables, uh, the timer delay, and testing if the entity is on the block. And the last one is the actual portal uh, teleportation mechanics that we have set in. So that basically controls all the advanced stuff that we need to take in consideration. So we'll start with the right click because that's the basically the first thing that you actually do when you do the thing. And before I go any further, generation, there's nothing unless you want to generate it for some re weird reason, but you don't really generate this kind of block so uh, okay so right click on event so the first thing that we're doing is we're going to test for the main and item if it is equal to the item that we basically want to store the nbt variables to uh, if that's true then what we want to do is we want to basically test if the item has an nbt tag of has portal now we're going to be using this particular variable for making sure that we can switch between linking and adding variables. So if it does not have this variable, what we want to do is basically run this part right here, which is going to get the variables that we need to, in order to basically store it to the, uh, the actual portal block. So basically we're just getting the X, Y, and Z we're storing that to local variables these are the local variables over here and we also have a string variable which is for the actual dimension id i'll get into that in just a second 
Uh, so basically these are number ones. We're getting the coordinates of the block that we're right clicking on. The next thing that we're doing is we're basically going to set the string variable and then we're going to replace the string from this basically this block right here which is creating text with and then we're getting the dimension ID of provided world. Um, I believe uh, provided dimension that should be under worlds I believe yeah this one right here so you want this block right here uh, the only downside though with this is it has a whole bunch of other text that is irrelevant to the actual portal like the dimension ID so running it with commands like we will eventually do is uh, it basically just needs some cleaning up before that so basically what this does is it gets rid of the first section of the actual script uh, which is not the actual ID. After this slash though, there is a space and then there is the portal, like the dimension ID uh, for what mod namespace as well as the actual um, dimension ID uh, registry for the dimension itself. So that will get rid of the first part, but as you can see, there's actually a square bracket right, uh, one sec right there so there's a, a little hard to see but there's a square bracket within the minecraft dimension part right here so there's actually a closing bracket after it and we have to get rid of that too so what we've done is we've just replaced the the closing bracket and we've gotten the variable that we just stored so uh, with this we're not using error or anything like that like any spaces it's just a complete empty block with nothing in it uh, this will just simply remove the actual um, section that we basically determined so again because dimensions don't use square brackets we can do that and uh, this basically just targets this whole section here and we're replacing it with nothing so after we've done that we have the variable set up we can actually apply these to the actual um actual uh, item itself so what we're doing is uh we're setting the portal time timer I, I don't even know if that's actually required anymore i think i might have i don't think we actually need that so what we need is to basically apply the item coordinates to the item uh, or the block coordinates to the item so we're getting the x y and z positions from our variables and we're assigning it to our main hand item because again this is where the main hand item is and then we're testing if it's if the main hand item so everything is consistent throughout here so we need to set the item coordinates like the item the coordinates to the block to the item and then we need to set the dimension id as well uh, the last thing that we need to do is make sure that this variable is updated to true so we know that we can move on to the applying stage so we're just basically setting this to true because if it's set to not up here it's basically saying false it's just a simpler version of actually testing for it all right so after the item is basically stored and has these variables and this one is set to true what we're doing is we're running the else statement because this is obviously going to return false if it's false it's going to run this script else which is basically equivalent to saying if it the variable is true um, what it's going to do is it's going to test if the current block location that we're right clicking on so the x y and z the current block is not equal to so this is the equal sign with the cross through it and basically what this does is it basically tests for the uh, location for the um, X, Y, and Z. And, you know, I just realized that this needs to be on the outside of the part right here or it won't actually test for it because we're using the variables and we need to basically call variables in. So make sure that I'll, I'll make sure to update the uh, procedures when I export them. But this needs to be on the outside of this in order to load the uh, test variables. So basically when we right click on the block, if it's not the same location as we just basically got the portal from, then we should be able to run this script below. 
So what this script below does is it just removes the item from the inventory of the block itself. Now the reason why that is is basically to clear it out, make sure that it doesn't have any conflict. Uh, and then the other thing that we're doing is we're setting the slot one or slot zero to make a copy of the item of the main hand. So basically all those variables that we just stored up here are going to also be included into that item in the slot because we're using the make a copy of and then the main hand item. So basically all those variables are going to be stored to the block. They're going to basically be our main way to call the MBT. Again, 1.8 for some 18 for some reason it's just um, not working. It wipes all the variables if the player teleports to another dimension or to another portal after like one or two times. So um, we have to basically run it from a item in order to make it sure that the block um, can actually read the items and stuff like the positions and stuff like that. So after we've done that, what we're doing is we're making sure that we can basically set the uh, main hand item to false. So what this will do is it will basically get it ready for the next iteration for actually copying the script over. So that's basically what this one does. We're just using it to our main hand. And then the last thing that we're doing is we're basically getting the portal dimension ID. Now you might have noticed that we're testing for slot zero up here and we're getting the MBT of the provided entity or pardon me, item. So these are the variables that we basically set up here. Those are the same ones. And the one down here, the item portal world is the same one right here. So we're basically just applying that to our local variables. And then finally, what we're doing is we're going to send a message to the entity, to the player, so we can basically know what uh, system that we've set up. Now, if it's not at the same location, if it's at the same location as we're basically trying to click on, what it's going to do is just print out an error message saying that uh, you can't basically link it to the same one. So that's all the right click event. It's pretty straightforward. Again, this procedure will be in the uh, project files so you'll be able to download and easily set this up in a couple of matter clicks so I'll make sure to provide that all right so there's that one and then we have the second thing that's basically running when the um, entity when the procedure is set up and that's the update tick so the update tick is basically doing two things but it's basically the same thing for two different types of entities uh, the first thing is we're, what we're doing is we're testing if the if a nearest entity exists within a 17 block area and we're testing for if that entity is a player. Now everything within this block right here is going to be relative to the player entity. Now the one below it is the exact same procedure it's just testing for the server player. This is for basically players on multiplayer this is for players that are not on multiplayer. Um, you will need to kind of set these both up just to make sure that they are properly set up. If you want to add different types of entities, you will have to update all of these um, particular blocks in order to make sure that the entity is supported. For example, if you wanted to add animals, um, there's an animal one that you can add, then you can basically you'll have to set this up does entity exist animals and then you have to set all these up to be the same type so what we're doing here is a very simple system we're just testing if the block location um, with the coordinates of um, negative okay so it's basically testing for the entity coordinates so if the entity coordinates of x y and z position of the entity and then we're getting the location offset. So the location offset is basically uh, taking the block coordinates and then it's offsetting it to the center with X and Z. And then we're going to increase that value by 0 point or 1.5, which basically increases at one block high. So we're basically testing for if the entity exists. You might want to adjust the height depending on the height of your block. Um, but the other thing that we're doing is we're going to subtract 0 0.15 from 
the actual location. Again, you might need to configure this for the height of your block. If it's like uh, one pixel high, then you will definitely have to configure this to test directly under. So again, my block is um, 0 0.25, so I'll, I'm just subtracting 1.5 or pardon me, 0 0.15, which is inside the block that we're testing. But um, again, we're just testing for the portal. If the portal exists there, then what we want to do is we want to enable the variable for the entity, can entity teleport. So we're basically enabling that so we can run a script in the uh, when the entity is actually standing on the block. If the condition fails though if they're not on the block what we want to do is we want to basically set uh, the variable to false so they can't teleport and then we're going to be setting the uh, portal timer which is the d default time that we actually have uh, for our timer for the delay to 200 or whatever value that you want to set it to uh, again we want to make sure that the distance for the player is at least 17 or you know a relative range where we can actually make sure that it will um, be within a certain area larger than our teleporting coordinates so for example 17 is I believe a six it was six or eight blocks I think it's about eight blocks uh, all around the actual portal and then there's the center block which is the 17th so that's basically that again doing the exact same thing for the actual server player as well so that one's pretty simple again the procedure will be in the uh, project files the last procedure that we have is when entity walks on the block so this one's a little bit more advanced I'll cover it as best as I can um, this one is for the player entity and this one is for the server player entity so we're basically going to be doing this procedure twice so I'm just going to minimize that because it's not really relevant um, at the moment because we just want to learn how to actually make it so the first thing that we're doing is we're going to be loading in our local variables we have our X Y and Z position for the portal as well as the namespace for the world name as well so what we're doing is we're going to be getting the coordinates from those particular that item that we basically stored uh, the X Y and Z coordinates and the world dimension ID once we've done that what we want to do is we want to make sure the entity exists one block um, which is within the like uh, a solid block at the center of the block 1.0 or pardon me, 1.5 blocks above the actual location. So this centralizes it, the X and Z. This is testing one block above and additional 0 0.5 to center centralize the actual block. So if the entity is directly on the block, then what we want to do is we want to make sure to test if the entity has the variable uh, enabled. So can entity teleport? Again, that is controlled through the update tick so it's basically enabling it if they're standing on the block right here so if this is true then we're basically testing if this is true and then what we're going to do is we're going to run the timer script which is basically going to test if the portal timer is greater than zero so if it's higher than zero so one or above and then what we're going to do is we're going to get the or set the timer the portal time now we have to set the entity that we're targeting each time uh, because this is just the way it needs to be set up so then we're basically subtracting that value by one so same idea as a regular timer we're just making sure that we're running it on the entity side of the actual timer rather than the block the reason for that is we want every entity to have its own timer and you could run into conflict if it was run on the block side so that's why we're using entity uh, mbt for this now once it reaches zero so when the timer subtracts the last last number to zero then what we want to do is reset the timer uh, this will be the best way to actually set it up uh, one other thing that we're doing is we're going to just output the time that's that little action bar timer that you saw there 
And then what we're doing is finally testing if the value is zero. If the value is zero, then what we want to do is we're going to set the value to 200 and then we're going to execute a command. This is the main thing that is basically teleporting us between the worlds. Uh, this is running the execute in command and then we have a space after that. And then there is the dimension ID that we need for basically teleporting to that world. So again, we got that through the right click event when we uh, linked up the item to the portal, like when we got the portal location. And then we have a space run TP, and then we are using at S, which basically says the relevant entity. Now the relevant entity is already determined by the entity that we're basically running the script from, which is the player. So this is basically that one because it's already executing a command. Uh, it's just the way that it works. So we want to make sure that it's at S, not at P or at E. It's going to teleport the relative entity itself. Finally, what we're doing is we're going to create a text width and then we're basically going to set the teleportation location. So we're using the local variable for the destination where we want to send the entity itself. So the local variable plus 0.5 to centralize the entity when they teleport there. And then we have a space here. So basically what this does is just make sure that the next iteration of the command is basically ready for the next one. So then we're basically just going to set the height of the actual block. Now this will vary depending on your block size. Uh, for mine it is 0.25 in height. So that's what I'm basically setting it to. And then there's another space here. And then finally what we're doing is we're just doing offsetting the um, centralizing the Z coordinate for the player when they spawn. So we're take getting the location for the entity Z position plus 0.5 and then the entity will actually spawn directly center in the block. So that's basically that. Um, again there's a server version, server, server player version. So that basically runs for the server players and the other one runs for the actual players. So that's all there is to it. I know this took a little bit of time to actually explain. I would go into detail how to create it but honestly, there's a lot of blocks in these advanced tutorials, so it's easier just if you were to download the procedures themselves. So I'll make sure to provide that in the uh, workspace on GitHub. I'll link it in the description of the video so you guys can easily download that. Outside of that, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.